Hello, Faith family, and thank you for joining us for another week of the Daily Connection. It's a time when we get together in the Word, and more importantly, the Word gets into us. So we're still looking at the, the broader theme of the return of the Lord, and we're talking specifically this week about trusting God's timing. Our teaching is going to come from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Today, we want to start with verse 1. Of course, all throughout the week, Brother Aaron and myself are going to be walking us through the text. But Paul starts out chapter 5 by saying this. About the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need anything to be written to you. So you read that and you think, well, maybe that means he's already given them everything they need. Uh, and of course, I definitely would take that from that context. But what does he mean exactly about times and epics and, and what seems to be the overall teaching he's doing here? Well, if you go back to the, the chapter 4, kind of concluding verses of 4, I would say like uh, probably 13 and following, you begin to see that he's talking there about the return of the Lord. Uh, that, that, that time when those who have been buried already asleep is the word that the New Testament writers would say. They will be raised, and then the others will be caught up with him in the air. He says, hey, comfort one another with these words. So he's talking about end times, obviously. And so when you get to this next one, times, seasons, uh, epics in some translations, he says, you don't need anything to be written to you. And then he says in verse 2, for you yourselves know very well the day of the Lord. So now he's dealing with another area that relates to end time, which is the day of the Lord. Of course, that's the day the ultimate judgment will take place. And he says, kind of like, you know, hey, you, you don't need anything to be written to you. And of course you say, well, what's he mean then by the idea of times and, and seasons? What's going on there? Well, the word times literally means chronology, chronos. So you don't need to know about specific ranges of time in terms of it'll be this long until the Lord returns. Uh, and in seasons, the idea of, of epics or series, uh, you don't need to know certain seasons and it relates to what time will happen. And it's fascinating because as he's going through all that, you, you can almost you know, hear our Lord's words as well. But obviously, it's something that they were concerned about. It's something they, they you know, felt some anxiety and worry about. Paul says, you know, you don't need to be taught anything else about that. A couple of reasons for that, you know, in one sense, you know, in 2 Thessalonians, he's going to write back to them again. That's his second letter. And he's going to give a little bit of a detail in terms of, you know, the preparation for the day of the Lord, what, what will precede that. He says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, now, Concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered to him, we ask you, brothers and sisters, not to be easily upset or troubled, either by prophecy or by message or by a letter supposedly from us, alleging that the day of the Lord has already come. Don't let anyone deceive you in any way. And then he goes on to give a few details. So one of the reasons why perhaps they had this question or they had these concerns is that maybe after Paul left, someone came along and began to teach some things uh, we do know that someone had already taught that the, or someone had taught that the resurrection had already take place. He said that that can't possibly be, uh, and so he dealt with that. And so the same way in relation to the day of the Lord. But I want to hone in on that phrase times and seasons because it bears a strong resemblance to what we see from Jesus in Acts chapter one, when the disciples were gathered with him there and they're anticipating his departure. And he says this in verse six. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, are you restoring the kingdom of Israel to Israel at this time? And he said, it is not for you to know times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and the ends of the earth. And so there we see Jesus telling them, don't get caught up in chronology in terms of when I'll be back. Don't get caught up in what seasons will precede that, what things will look like here and there. Uh, instead, he says, your focus needs to be on one purpose, being a witness for me. Uh, your focus, need, you, you, all your energy needs to be directed in one endeavor. That is to preach the gospel, make disciples. Uh, and the thing about it is this. If he had given us a certain period, a very specified period, as one writer said, that would create a sense of indifference. There would be no urgency in our activity. There would be no urgency in our gospel ministry. Because we would be saying, well, i got time. Well, there's two problems with that. First of all, we don't know if the people we're reaching have time because we don't know, their, you know what day will, their, you know, when their death will come. We don't know that. 
Um, the other problem with that is, is that our Lord didn't give us a specified time. So now we do live with urgency in the anticipation of his return. Uh, we do know one thing. If we go to Matthew's gospel, we know there was one thing that, that Jesus said would initiate what we might consider that, that the last days concept. Of course, the New Testament writer said we're in the last days. And that was simply this. That the gospel must be preached to everyone. Then he said, start looking. So, you know, basically that tells me that we trust God's timing by not being caught up in and not being consumed by an infatuation, if you will, with the end times concept. Instead, we stay focused on, we stay committed to the ministry he gave us, which is baptizing in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, which is gospel ministry, preaching the gospel. Number two, teaching them to observe all I've commanded you. That, of course, is disciple-making ministry. And it's to those two endeavors that we commit ourselves so that we're not giving over to anxiety and fear and worry, but at the same time, we're not giving over to spirit of indifference either. We're trusting his timing. So I hope today is encouraging to you. Uh, maybe it's something you struggle with as we see everything taking place in the world, all the political unrest, all the social unrest, the continued decline of morality that we see uh, on kind of sort of a daily basis. Uh, the, the concept of one world government beginning to line up pretty well with, through technology and communication. All those things definitely fit a pattern that we see presented in Scripture. But still yet, that's not to be our focus and our infatuation. We are to focus on the gospel. We are to focus on being infatuated with making disciples. And in that, we will honor him. And in that, we can live with confidence that when he does return, he'll find us doing exactly what he told us to do living sin.